Chapter 1 Third grade, here today, gone tomorrow. I can hardly believe it. It seems like just yesterday was the first day of school. New pens, pencils, erasers, notebooks, clothes, a brain that had a chance to take a break over summer vacation. All the things, all of the things a kid needs to start a new school year. Now it's the last day of school, just in time. My pens are out of ink, my pencils are stubs, my erasers are all erased, my clothes are getting too small, and my brain needs to take a break over summer vacation. It's definitely time for school to end. All right, class, take a few more minutes to finish cleaning out your desks, and then the party can begin, Mr. Cohen, our teacher, calls out. Waving a six-inch rubber lizard in his hand, Mr. Cohen looks ready for vacation, too. Not only has he had to do all the regular end-of-the-year teacher junk, but he's also had to do a lot of extra stuff, had to do lots of extra stuff because of what we call the pox plague. For the last month, practically everyone in our class has come down with the chicken pox. In class, people have either been absent or here and covered with scabs. It got so bad that I even made up a sign to put on our door that says, Welcome to Scab City. I, Amber Brown, have not been absent, have not gotten the chicken pox. I am one healthy kid. I never catch anything except fireflies, and I let them go. Be finishing up, Mr. Cohen tells us. I cram more of my stuff into my knapsack, my stick of lip gloss for when my lips get chapped. I only use it in the winter, so it's gotten a little melted now that it's almost summer. And the good luck troll that my Aunt Pam sent to help get me through my math tests easily. I'm glad that she sent it, but really nothing can help me get through math tests easily, except my best friend, Justin Daniels, who could explain it to me so that I understood it, but he moved away. I pull out the large ball of used chewing gum that Justin and I collected. He gave it to me when he left, and I planned to keep it forever. I've kept it in my desk because I knew it would be safe there, and I haven't had to worry about my mom finding it and thinking that it's gross or something. Next, I pull out a small photo album. I call it my dad book. Now that my parents are separated, Mom doesn't really want pictures of him around the house. I miss him a lot. He's so far away, in France. So I made up the dad book and keep it in my desk. There are pictures of my dad, alone and with me in them. There are even a few pictures of Dad, Mom, and me together. Pictures taken before they split up this year, when we were all still happy. Or at least I thought that we were happy. Keeping the top of the desk over my head, I open the book to one of the pictures, give it a fast kiss, and whisper, Hi, Dad. Today's the last day of school. I miss you and can't wait to see you this summer. Boys, stop that. Mr. Cohen sounds annoyed. I put the photos into my knapsack and check to see what's happening. Jimmy Russell and Bobby Clifford are dueling with rulers. They are so immature for people who will be fourth graders in only a few months. They have scabs on their faces. Personally, I think that each of them is nothing but a big, ugly scab to begin with. They always tease me about everything, but especially about my name. They always say things like, Amber Brown is not a crayon so I don't mind when they get yelled at. I hear Jimmy whisper, What's he going to do, flunk us? Grades are already turned in. Obviously, Mr. Cohen has heard him, too, because he gives Jimmy a look that says, It's never too late to change a grade. The look does it. Jimmy and Bobby throw lots of stuff in the garbage and quickly and quietly sit down. Mr. Cohen is the best teacher in the world, or at least the best teacher I've ever had, but when he gets mad, he gets a look that is pretty scary. I call it getting Cohen'd. Finish up, everyone, Mr. Cohen says. All that's left in my desk are my bagel-shaped barrettes and my fuzzballs. I take the barrettes and leave the fuzzballs. Soon, everyone is sitting down, waiting for Mr. Cohen to speak. I look around the classroom. Half the people are out sick. One, Freddy Romano, had to leave early because his dad's vacation time couldn't be changed. Mr. Cohen makes a little speech about how much he's enjoyed the year with us, how he's actually going to miss us, how even though we won't be in his class next year, he would love it if we visited, visited him. Then he hands out our passports. All year long, we use them to pretend that we were visiting different countries. I want you to have these to always remember the journeys we have taken to visit other countries and the journey each of you has taken to grow, to learn, to change. I look at my passport. 
All of the regular stuff is on it. Mr. Cohen has stamped something new on it. It says, Visa, to enter fourth grade. And he's added a note to me. Amber, you've been a joy in my classroom. I love your sense of humor, your sense of exploration, your willingness to try new things, even when they are hard, like math and like getting used to Justin's move. You've used this passport well. Have a great time with your real passport. Please send me some postcards. Have a great time in London and Paris. I look up at Mr. Cohen and grin. I will send him postcards, for I, Amber Brown, am going to London, England, with my Aunt Pam, and then I'm going to Paris, France, to see my father. It's a real trip, not a pretend one, and I can't wait for it to begin.